Hello my loves, hello, welcome to a new video Grab a drink of your choice, I have a nice latte Okay, green because it is the colour of hope And today I'm going to be giving you 5 things to help yourself if you have any kind of anxiety Whether it's like social anxiety or anxiety in general or agoraphobia and you struggle to leave home Anything for these kind of scenarios that are so present within our daily lives. I'm going to give you five things, five tips that will actually 100% help you and that personally have helped me and made a difference. Number one, don't force yourself. Please stop forcing yourself. Something I've realized that we tend to do when we have these passions of like anxiety and so on is punish ourselves and teach ourselves and talk to ourselves through fear and from fear. We do it from a place which is fear, but we also impose fear on ourselves. Whether it's something we want to accomplish today, finish some work, finish, finish a project, finish cooking something, or going to the shopping centre, we tend to talk to ourselves as our enemy. So we talk to ourselves from punishment. Oh, if you don't do this today, you're just scumbag if you don't do this today if you don't get this done today you're a loser you're the worst like that is generally how we speak to ourselves that's how i've spoken to myself many times that i can count and when you do that when you try to force yourself to do things that for any reason you're not gonna do that day or expectations that are not gonna meet you're not gonna meet that day you are just double punishing yourself because there is punishing there is this punishment of not getting that done which whether you treat yourself nice or not you already feel a bit like wishing you had got that done and you didn't you if you don't go to the shopping center to buy that top you probably think and wish you had done that if you don't get to finish that project you will think to yourself even if you're kind to yourself, oh, I wish I had finished that project. It would have been so nice. But you haven't, right? So that is the first punishment. And the second punishment is how you tell yourself all those ugly words and all those insults that at the end of the day are going to go in here. Whether you know they're not true and you know you're just being hard to yourself, you're still telling that to yourself. And you're still increasing and feeding insecurity. You're still making you feel bad when at the end of the day there's no reason. So don't force yourself. That will be the first one. Don't force yourself. Don't force anything. If you need to imagine go to the shopping center to get something and you're struggling a lot because you feel incapable, you feel like you can't do, you'll have panic or you have panic attacks. Calm down. Like, don't tell yourself like, oh, you have to. That is the worst sentence I've heard in my entire life. You have to. You have to because if not, you just you have to. You're already making yourself tense. You're already making you hate the thought of going because it's something you have to do as if it was going to a job, not something you're doing because you would like to or for pleasure or because it's good for you. You're just implying that this is something you have to do. And that already is going to create as well rejection. You know, rejection with that. And if you already fear it for any reason, or reason of any kind, you're going to fear it more and you're going to drift away even more from that, which is something that definitely you do not want to do. So once again, first, don't force yourself. Don't force anything. Be empathic. If, if, if going for some trainers and some top that you need is going to take you a week because you don't feel like you can do that, then let it be. I guarantee you, that if you don't force yourself, you will get that done way faster than if every day you say, oh, you have to do this, you have to, I can't believe you haven't done this, oh my gosh. If you are like that with yourself, like your enemy, maybe weeks go by, two weeks even, and you don't do it because you're talking yourself from a, from a place of fear, from a place of hate, and no one wants that, not even yourself. Second, and this is something that you might already know, but probably you don't practice. Avoid caffeine in the mornings. And I'm not talking in the mornings in general. I love coffee, okay? But I do love lattice. So this doesn't really count as coffee, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I always say. But you know, when you've just woken up sometimes, I know we have the habit of either not having breakfast 
or just drinking coffee without having breakfast. If you have lots of anxiety and panic attacks and during your whole day like me, you struggle to breathe, there is nothing worse that you could be doing for your own self than waking up without having any food and just having pure coffee. I'm not saying coffee with milk. It's mostly like coffee by itself, loads of coffee. It's the worst thing because you are, yeah, shooting adrenaline to your system. You're making, if your system is already working, now it's like, and your system actually is not working normal. And your nervous system is actually not working normal at this stage because you are really anxious. So your nervous system is working actually way faster than what it should. So now, if without having anything to eat, you're putting coffee, well, imagine what you're doing. You're making it overwork. And that is going to result on you being even more unable to control that anxiety, to control how nervous you are, how agitated you are. You're going to be like, and you're going to lose it and you're probably going to have a worse day than what you will have had because that also is not going to allow you to think clear, you're just going to be going from one negative thought into another negative thought, into a toxic and toxic and toxic, and you're just going to be in a vicious circle on negative thoughts, and this is going to drain your brain and fry it. This is going to fry your brain, all right? And we don't need that. And I'm not, once again, not saying don't drink coffee, do. But first, please have something to eat. Listen, I know sometimes, also when you're anxious, like you, it's either you have a big appetite and you want to eat so much, everything in your fridge, or you don't have it. Me, I tend to do, eat less, but sometimes it depends. Sometimes I, I want to eat the whole fridge. But like my point is, have something. And I know sometimes you, you're just so bad, that so mentally unstable and going through so much that you don't even want to eat anything, right? Because everything seems too much, yeah? And you feel like you deserve so little, unfortunately. So eat something easy. What I do, I always have easy snacks in my fridge. What did I have this morning? A banana because a banana is just easy and i also tend to do I, I don't think people do it unless they're going like bad i put them in the fridge even if they're okay to it because then when i have them the fact that they're cold for some reason makes me like more the banana i don't know why but the fact that it's cold i don't know in my brain what happens but like i feel more positive and i feel like i enjoy more the bananas if it was something unhealthy or more addictive than if it was outside the fridge. So today I had a banana and it's something very easy to do. You already do not have an empty stomach and then you can have your coffee. But now that coffee is not going onto your empty stomach, you do have something there, right? And obviously try not to have like five coffees, right? Or three in a row, you know, if, especially if they're like expressos, but like make sure that if you have coffee, you've had something. And once I get a banana, a yogurt, whatever is easy for you like the easiest thing because i know how you feel and i know you don't want to cook anything and i know you don't want to even exist but like honestly just i promise you just like banana um yeah um yogurt um, anything all right but something that you have to like chew because then at least the coffee is just not going directly as a strong strongly onto your body in a way that you don't need okay me personally, coffee um, for me is like very ther therapeutical in terms of like when I feel anxious, anxious, it heals me or it keeps me calm in a way because obviously mostly it's actually milk. But I have realized that if I have coffee without eating anything, I do feel anxious. Even when I eat something. So for example, today I've had a really, really small coffee that had obviously loads of milk. And this is the second one. And... I won't be having any probably until a few hours later. And I know when I have this, I'm going to feel a bit anxious. I know that. But I know that I've eaten and I'm going to be eating later. You know, I'm not relying just on coffee because our body is already overstimulated. So just keep it simple. Basically, do not have coffee directly onto your body without having anything to eat. Eat anything simple, but have breakfast as well. Because I've realized talking to so many people and myself, People that tend to be very anxious, it's so good for us to have breakfast in the mornings. I know many people tend to skip it, ourselves too. But like having breakfast in the morning is a game changer for your brain. I don't really know how to explain you the reason. I just know that when you're so, so anxious and such a person that struggles with this, having breakfast is very good for our brain. 
it is. It kind of puts everything in order and it gives you that energy that you need to try to think clear and, and tell yourself nice things and, and be okay. Three, one step at a time. Small victories. Celebrate small victories and set yourself small victories. One problem about social anxiety and when you want to do so much, but you aren't able to do anything, nothing, because you have just so much anxiety, is the fact that we have set, we set this massive list of tasks that we have to do. Oh, I, I want to get these trainers. I want to get that top because um, I just... Um, I want to get that top because I need to go to this place and they told me I have to wear that color and it's for tomorrow and birthday present and we over well already one second overstimulated and when we remind ourselves all the things we have to do and we have not done when we have the time we haven't done them because we fear the thought of doing them we get nervous so we keep just delaying it even when it involves our own health how many times I've had to go to the doctor I've needed and I kept delaying it because I just was fearful to have to interact, to have to call. I've been delaying it. Like, girl, it's your health. And it's actually been serious things that have to be checked. And and if they have been bad, it will have, you know, I will have been in a very dangerous situation. Um, you know, I think we, we both know. So I've delayed things like that because I was scared to talk to someone on the phone. It's like, how little do I love myself? generally so one step at a time think about and we know we know you have like 10 or 20 things in your list that you need to do look at the list think which one is more relevant obviously something related to health that will be the first one but if it's nothing related to health maybe imagine tomorrow someone's birthday you need the present or you need to wear that color top orange whatever so okay just forget whatever else in your mind or on that list that you need to do and prioritize that, prioritize that one. And just tell yourself, today, today I'm going to get this one done. Today, I am going to get this one done. And today, what you do is you get that done. You get it done, right? And don't say you have to, okay? We've already learned that. Don't say you have to. Just say, okay, I'm going to try to do this today because it's good for me and it's gonna make me happy and if you're thinking too much about it and you're getting just too stressed like don't feed that thought just let it flow I say, oh, it's not important you know take importance of it because you're already putting all the importance of that and that's also making you suffer the fact that that seems to be everything right just when you know you would like to do that today you know and you don't give as much importance but you still think about it, you know, it becomes less important and then you fear less doing it. So just write it somewhere you know, and look at it from time to time. Imagine yourself doing it. Mm, what's the worst thing that can happen? You will eventually do it, but one step at a time, one thing at a time. And I will even advise you just one, two thing a day. Right. Unless after doing that one thing, you have a boost of confidence, which tends to happen. And after you do that thing, then you really feel like you want to do another thing that you need to do. Then do it. But don't go, you know, because it is a process. So, yeah, I would just say one day you do a small thing. It could be anything, right? It could be even eating. It could be even having three meals a day. It could be even having a workout at home because you haven't moved in so long. It could be anything. Or finishing that book. Because the smallest acts that we don't do because of our anxiety and our suffering, at the end of the day, those things that even lead to be depressed, these things lead to depression. And I feel like I'm currently here, I've been and I am. These small little things are acts of self-love. They truly are, because those are things you haven't done in so long and you've wanted. That's thing, you've wanted to do them. Because you know that's the way to live in your true best life. But you have been unable to do it because you had no will to live. So doing just these tiny things like working out for 10 minutes in, the, in your living room, having three meals a day, having breakfast, reading three pages of that book. Those little things fill your heart, heart with a will to live. You gain life. 
because you wanted to do them so long but you didn't have the strength so anything is it it might seem the smallest thing but i promise you it is not in any way i know that you know that it is not it is not and you know that so me it's things like taking the bean out because I get nervous when I'm outside, I suffer. So taking the bean out for me is an accomplishment. Doing my makeup. Because most of my days, I don't even have the strength to do so. So these little things are massive victories and I hope you know that. Okay, I think that we're in number four now. And I think this will be number four, the fact of like celebrate things. It, it, like small victory and now it will be celebrated. It doesn't matter how small it is. Because I know many people that don't suffer from like depression or these things do not understand. They don't get it, all right? And, and it, you also need to understand their perspective and where they're coming from for them because they don't know how it feels better. They cannot even picture the fact that you're proud you made your bed today. Because for them, that's like... That's like average, like that's a normal thing. But I know that for you it's not. So if you made your bed today, congratulations. I'm really proud of you. Because I know how hard it is. I know. And it makes me feel like like I want to hug you because I know how hard these things are. I experience them every day. It is like a war with yourself. And it's not easy to win it. So congratulations. I'm so proud of you. And I think we are in number and on number five. And I'm trying because I've been like kind of, I'm talking out of my mind during this whole video and I always do. I'm trying to think about number five, but I think I'll say, don't get frustrated with what I've just said when people don't understand you. And I know it's very hard because you want to be understood. And also when people don't understand you, they are rude to you. You know, like for example, sometimes my mom couldn't understand if I made my bed and I got excited. So that kind of pulled me down. Or when she just wanted me to clean the room now and I and I really had no will to even exist, right? I didn't even want to be alive. So for me, doing the bed was something so out of me. Like, you know, that when I did it, I felt proud. But obviously she didn't understand that. Sometimes that really led me to be angry, to be frustrated, to, to think that the world hated me. But the reality is that no, the world doesn't hate you. You know, everyone has a different life and perspective. Many people have not experienced depression. So even if they might have a family member that has it, depression or anxiety or both, they will never even be able to picture what that feels like. And it makes sense. So don't take it um, too personally. And I know it's hard because it's like, it's like going at you, but it's not directly going at you. And this will be linked to what will be also number six which is realize that you're not the center of the world and I'm, i don't mean this in a rude way but for so long i all these things that i fear like going to the street and all this is because i generally tend to think i'm the center of the world right the world revolves around me because if it doesn't why do I think everyone is going to judge me? Oh, someone walk be walking behind me for three seconds is judging me. If I go to get my trainer, is that going to judge me? Everyone that crosses next to me. Like, why do I think I'm the center of the world? Do you realize, do I realize, but do you realize that every single person is on their minds as much as you're on yours? Blow twist. And I'm still learning this, but like every single person you're seeing, things like you, things like me have thousand things on the brain even if they're not emotional even if they don't have anxiety they're probably thinking how they're gonna pay rent this month if their kids are gonna go to school or not if they're going to join the gym if their colleagues is talking on the back and bad about them you know the amount of crazy things they're thinking about they're worrying about their own life because i'm telling you they probably have so many things to worry about and most of us obviously have family so there is so much going on yeah they are not judging you. They're not judging you. At the end of the day, even these famous people that you see, like singers and stars, that everyone, you know, these teenagers seem to rule their life around them. They still don't do that. They still go to school, I guess. They still go to high school. They still have lunch with their parents. They still see their family members. So even the world doesn't revolve around them. So let alone us, right? Like what I mean, and and what I want you to know is that it's so important to realize the world doesn't revolve around me. Because then you're able to do things with another feeling. Like there's so much more. Yeah? Like obviously you matter so much. But because we worry about everything, I want you to know this. 
Because worrying so much about everything we need to know this, the world doesn't revolve around me. They have so much in their minds. So every time you get nervous, you struggle to do something, think, geez, they have thousand things in their minds like me. They have so many worries. I'm literally like a tiny dot in their lives. Like when someone attends you in the shop, what do they mean to you? Tell me, you're going to forget about them in three seconds, right? Because you're all self-centered thinking about your life. Well, they're doing the same thing. You for them, they're saying even more or worse or, or even because you are buying in the shop, right? In the whole day, you just bought that top or that train or those trainers. Yeah, you've been to that shop. You've interacted with one person, right? The person that's a new the employee in the shop, but the employee in the shop treats with like thousands, thousands, hundreds and hundreds of people a day. Do you know what I mean now? And if you go to a restaurant or a cafeteria, same. For them, you are just one of a hundred. But for you, they're the one because you've gone to just that cafeteria today. And if for you already doesn't mean anything, imagine for them. And this has helped me a lot to, to do things and to realize that it's okay. They're not judging me. I'm just judging myself and knowing that has given me so much peace. So this will be five advices that will help you with anxiety in general. And I truly hope they helped you. I really hope they did. Um, I really wish you all the best in the world and I love you. Jeez, I don't know if you can feel it, but like I, I'm so anxious right now, like I'm struggling to breathe. Because I'm thinking all of you guys are going to watch this. You don't know me. I don't know you, but I feel like I know you and I feel like you know me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hope you have a beautiful day. I'm just going to spend it home. I am surprised. <laughs> Putting the example of the trainers because I actually need to go get trainers and I haven't done it in like a couple of weeks because I can't. I feel like I'm unable to do so. But um, I hope that when I watch this video, it actually helps me too. I love you. I wish you all the best in the world and have a beautiful day. See you very soon. And subscribe because I truly want to see you again.